web browser, I can also show you, although this is not connected to the web here, so it's going to tell me it can't find the page. But it's a fully compatible web browser. It, we're using the Firefox. I'm not sure if, you've, if everyone, if some of you have already been using it. Server not found, yes. This is simply not connected to the internet, but otherwise it would find it. Now I can go ahead and type in uh, some kind of website. Okay. And then I could, I could also use my keyboard here, of course. But then I could just type it in, and if I'm finished, it would try to look for that website. Then I can add a bookmark for it and save it as a bookmark. I can go to YouTube and pull stuff off YouTube or just watch at the YouTube uh, uh, site and play the video file. So you can all do this now. It's very, very flexible. Um, I'll let me change to my other little, little USB stick. This is a slower USB stick, it just takes more time, but anyway. If I go to USB, I have also saved the video that we just started to play back. I've saved it as a high definition video file on my USB stick, and I could pass it to a customer if he wants that. But I could also say, okay, see, this is the Tour de France video. If I play it back, then I will see it in high definition. Did it take this? Okay, there it is. Okay, see this is the Tour de France video and it's all high definition and it's playing it right off the USB stick. So in the future you may ask the customer if you do a job for him, so what kind of playback devices do you have? Do you have a Blu-ray player? Okay, I'll make you a Blu-ray disc. Do you have a PlayStation? Okay, I'll just make you a disc that plays fine on your, on your Sony. Do you have a cell phone that's capable of playing Mac video? Okay, what type is it? and then you simply deliver a bunch of files to him. So he doesn't have to care about converting it into other files. Okay, I think you get the point. So I stop it. I'm not really proud about it. Okay, so. All right, so see, this is the new concept that we have behind. This whole system has been turned into something that can read in a ton of files and output a ton of files and can hold them in one project if you want to. So in one project you can mix AVC, HD, XDCAM and HDV footage and you can output to whatever file format you're up to. So you're really free in doing all the ins and all the outs. And for us that was a major, major step. Okay, that's all I've, I can think of for now. Are there any questions? I'm sure there are questions. <laughs> you can prepay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The question is, is there a backup in the device? No, um, but we have four USB ports in the back and one in the front. Typically what we now do is we have switched from the removable hard drives that had our customized trays and, and the different ones for every model to standard USB external hard drives that you can buy from a number of different sources, I believe, in different, in different sizes and different concepts because I think that's the more modern approach. So you could just have an external USB device and do your backup with this. This device even allows you to run an entire project on an external USB uh, hard drive. So, so I think that's the, that is the new concept. Yes, it doesn't look as nice. It's nicer if it's integrated. But we believe that what people really want to do is they want to have external USB devices. They, they are very inexpensive. Connectors, yes. Um, this is actually adding connectors to the Casablanca. It's not taking uh, connectors away. Because this also has analog inputs. So if I go into, let's say, the audio, and then I want to record something off an analog record. Oh, that's editing, okay. Also have editing tools in it. I think I misclicked. Okay, um, I go into analog recording. Then you can select the input. And so you have lots of inputs, RCA jacks in the front and back, and you even have the SCART connector in the back. And you could decide what format you want to record. So this is typical if someone has analog records and you want to create a digital file out of it, you can directly connect the record player to this and then record it. And we even have methods to enhance the audio in here. So in edit, 
You can even go ahead and denoise and de-click. Those are very powerful tools that can really get you high quality audio. But we also have analog inputs in here that directly move your analog video into the video archives. So if I click on analog input, I have an, oh no, why do I always misclick here? Okay. So you see you have different inputs. You have YC front and back. You have the SCART uh, in the back. And then you can decide in video settings, is this going to be 16 to 9 or, two or 4 by 3? We have different quality levels. You can also have a full screen preview on this. So you actually still have all the analog inputs and outputs. Um, but you also have a DVI connector that is capable of high definition output that you can just use a standard, very inexpensive adapter cable to HDMI. Now, why is it DVI, not HDMI? Simply because the connector is far more sturdy. DVI has some screws that you can use to really mount your, uh, your connector to the unit. And HDMI is a consumer device thing that can be locked, that can slip out the unit, so simply because of that. But it's fully compatible with all these. This, for example, is using a DVI to HDMI adapter cable. Uh, it's no electronics. These are electronically compatible standards. Yeah, there are lots of audio connectors. Um, in the front, we have several. So you can go in into the front. And in the front, you also have another USB and also a micro microphone jack here, a headphone jack. Microphone is in the back. In the back, we also have added a high quality audio um, input and output that's using a Wolfson high definition audio codec. And you will find this in the, in the back of the unit. So there's an additional set of audio inputs and outputs that are supposed to have a lower signal to noise ratio. I mean, my developers keep telling me that, but I can't tell the difference between our original ones and, and those, but, but anyway, <laughs> yes. Okay, well, you can also import the file directly from it as long as it really looks as at, a, at a hard drive, mass storage hard drive. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So the question is if you have like an Enovia hard drive and your camcorder directly records into it, um, can you then later on connect it and just import the file as a file? Or do you still have to emulate a tape? And the answer is as long as it appears like a storage, a mass storage device to a computer or to the Linux operating system that we have, you can directly import it. And as far as I can tell, this is the case. They look like a mass storage device where you can read files from, from and you can also store files into. So um, this is the case. Okay, well, the, if you, the question was, if you, if you buy the hardware upgrade that gives you the DVI output and that gives you a lot of other stuff too, um, how compatible is that to this unit? How comparable is it? I think that was the question really. The answer is it's very, very compatible. It may not have the same CPU speed. We will offer CPU upgrades to the machines uh, at that stage because we've sold different mainboards over the time and we have plus models and non-plus models. And some of them, you may want a faster CPU. Um, and uh, that would be a good occasion because we have to take the unit apart anyway for inserting the new card. So that could be a good time to also enhance the CPU speed. But uh, it's, that's the only exception. Only the CPU speed is then the difference. So even if you decide to not invest in a faster CPU, you'd still have all the high definition outputs. You'd still have all these inputs and outputs features. It's just that maybe your effects wouldn't render quite as fast. Mm -hmm.